Rated PvP has just been released in the West and there's a lot of hype around it. I wanted to put together a video to kind of give you guys some information in regards to every single class and how they should be played, the pros and cons, counters, all that good stuff, just to give you guys some more information and some more intel on some of these classes to help you out on your PvP journey. I want to give a huge shout out to Typhoon, rank 1 Grandmaster in KR, former Royal Rotors champion. He's got multiple characters, multiple classes in Grandmaster. What better player to get information from when it comes to how classes are supposed to be played? Uh, my goal with this is to really give you guys an accurate perception and understanding of every single class and what their rules are, the pros and cons, counters, all that good stuff in PvP. If you guys find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and let's begin. Berserker is the first class on the list, and the role of this class is a melee damage carry that gets setups by their team. These Chad Zerkers can deal massive damage but need to rely on their teammates to get those attack opportunities created for them. We want to see 750 swiftness along with 250 domination for that extra damage on CC targets. For 300 second round timers, depending on the version or patch we're on, you'll want to put in 100 points into specialty from domination to get into your identity stance three times. The the pros to Berserker is their high damage coupled by their large hitboxes. The cons to Berserkers are its long cooldowns, slow animations making them prone to interrupts, and a poor ability to initiate. As a Berserker you'll counter Bard, Holy Knight, while having a tougher time against Sorks and Blades which will be your counter. The ideal comp for Berserker is a double melee Bard setup. The extra melee needs to be an initiating specialist to create attack opportunities for the Zerker. Outside of the damage buffs and hard CC protection that the bards provide, we don't really want to use Pally as a support here because Pally is more of a melee support and a 3 melee comp is never ideal due to its positioning disadvantages. And remember, we're talking about the ideal team composition here. Gunlancer is next and this class is known to be a frontline defensive off support class. Outside of their solid support ability, Gunlancer specialize at countering initiators. Gunlancers have a couple of options with their secondary stat for PvP as we like to see 750 swiftness coupled with either 250 endurance or 250 specialty. I'm going to predict that the western audience is going to lean towards maximizing damage here by using domination but at the higher levels of competitive play in Korea at least players prefer either endurance for the increased tankiness and effectiveness of their support skills or 250 specialty to increase their uptime on their meter allowing them to have higher uptime on their level 2 super armors. Gunlancer pros include being strong versus most melee, damage reduction and shields for their teammates, and a solid awakening skill that provides a lot of map control, damage, and utility in the form of CC protection for their team. Mobility and chasing ability, however, would be the major cons of this class. As a Gunlancer, you can expect to counter Strikers, Wardancers, and Scrappers while struggling against Sorceress, Gunslinger, Deadeye, Shadowhunter as your counters. Ideal comps for this class would be a 1 melee, 1 range, 1 Gunlancer, or double ranged Gunlancer. This would be really the only comp viable for a double ranged at the moment. Rounding out our final warrior class, Paladin is one of the two main support classes and is considered melee support. Every top player in Korea would tell you 750 Swift, 250 Endurance is the way to go. However, I can personally tell you that a lot of Western players, even some top tier pallies in RU, will recommend 250 Domination for the extra damage. Korean players believe this to be a poor trade off though, seeing as the Endurance gives you a lot more tankiness and effectiveness on your shields, which they believe to be ultimately more important than the extra damage from Domination. Paladin is extremely powerful in the current meta as they have solid damage despite being a beefy support class. The burst potential, even while running endurance as your substat, is very solid. Weaknesses of Paladin can, but not always, include mobility depending on which skills you take. Technically, uptime on damage would also be a con, but let's be real here, as a dedicated support class, listing that as a con would just be ridiculous. This class currently has very few substantial weaknesses considering its role. As a support class, you really don't hard counter anything. Classes that will give you a hard time, however, include Berserker, Blaster, Wardancer, and Soulfist. These aren't even really hard counters, just classes that can actually pose a threat to Paladin, as they are all high damage dealing classes. Ideal comps for Pally would include one range, one initiating melee alongside the Paladin. 
Sorceress is known to be an overall balanced class with the role of a ranged damage carry. Sorks will be running 750 swiftness alongside 250 domination for that extra damage on CC targets. Some pros for this class include high damage, mobility in the form of long range blinks, and large hitboxes. Cons can include being very vulnerable when having no meter and not being able to create attack opportunities as an initiator at the higher levels of play. However, this is certainly certainly not the case at the lower levels. Sorks will have the advantage countering classes like Bard, Artillerist, Berserker, Warlord, and Soulfist, while being countered by various range classes such as Deadeye, Gunslinger, Shadowhunter. Ideal classes to join a Sork would be one melee plus a Paladin. Bard is one of two main supports in PvP, more specifically a ranged support. You can say it is the less offensive support of the two. Much like the Paladin comparison with stats, every single Korean player will say to run 750 swiftness along with 250 endurance for the much needed tankiness and boost to support skills. My good friend Lofi, who's a master bard and RU will tell you to run domination for the extra damage mainly coming from Soundholic and that the extra endurance isn't really needed due to the uptime on your support skills it could provide itself. Most of the time you'll be using your Soundholic against grounded or hard CC targets in combo with your prelude but keep in mind you do not get the extra damage from domination against staggered targets or targets under the paralysis effect. Korean players are heavily against the idea of running domination as Bard is naturally the squishiest class in the game. To name off some pros, Bard can provide the only team-wide hard CC resistance in the game along with both defensive and offensive buff skills while maintaining a lot of level 2 CC resistances up to 4 in the current meta build. Cons include having a clear weakness against range classes as well as being very vulnerable when alone. Carry potential is also very poor due to its lack of damage making bards very reliant on teammates to get the job done. Like all main supports, we won't be listing out the classes you counter as your focus is to do just that, support. Classes that will, however, give you a difficult time would be classes like Sork, Shadowhunter, Berserker, and Scrapper. Let me just start by saying that sharpshooters are currently in a bad state. I never want to deter players from playing a class they like, so I will say this. You can fully expect this class to receive buffs now that the Royal Rotors tournament is over. Back on topic here, sharpshooters want to be running 750 swift along with 250 crit. The majority of your damage will come from either unsuspecting foes or players under paralysis, so domination is definitely not the go-to here. Pros are really hard to list, which makes this one of the worst classes, but the two things that would be the standout features in sharpshooters kit would be the stealth and a very large hitbox on their hard cc skill claymore we could also throw in a hard cc immunity to one of their movement skills as well the cons for sharpshooter is that it's just not easy to deal damage as a damage carry class it takes way too long to get the damage off easily interruptible and very very predictable when it comes to the classes you'll counter we actually couldn't think of one for a little while until we thought oh i I guess we could put Blade down for this. Classes that counter Sharpshooter, however, include Deadeye, Gunslinger, Shadowhunter, Scrapper. Ideal comps for Sharpshooter would be one melee and pally alongside the Sharpshooter, or a Gunlancer in range for the double ranged comp. You would think that a class with guns would be ranged, and while having long range skills, Deadeye is actually a ranged slash melee hybrid damage carry. 750 swiftness and 250 domination is the stat priority here. Pros include an abundance of super armor, four to be exact, three of which are in the pistol stance, along with a solid ability contributing to map control with high damage. The largest drawback with Deadeye is that they actually need to be close range to get their combos out to deal maximum damage. This is a lot of risk due to the fact that they're categorized as a range class in the game, making them naturally squishy and requiring them to come in close range to deal damage, which can be dangerous. As a Deadeye, you counter Sorks, Sharpshooters, Gunlancers, Blades, Soulfists, while struggling against classes like Gunslingers, Strikers, Shadowhunters, Scrappers. Deadeyes are very versatile when it comes to comps due to their hybrid nature and not only having to rely on teammates to get the job done. While being able to fit in a variety of comps, they are one of the few that can even run in a no support comp, which would look something like Gunslinger, Wardancer, Deadeye. 
Artillerist is another hybrid melee ranged class that would be considered a defensive damage carry. Artillerists have the highest wombo combo damage and is a direct counter to a lot of melee classes. High level Korea play runs 750 swiftness, 250 expertise, the only class running expertise, while the majority of western players prefer running 250 domination for the extra damage. Expertise increases the CC duration of targets and the logic behind running that here is that your damage is less Less reliant on your long wombo combo that will for sure get peeled most of the time or mitigated at the very least at the higher levels as you can land skills like missile strike with a single CC running expertise. Pros for artillerists include high damage, solid uptime on level 2 CC resistances in map control, while the cons for artillerists would include being easily interruptible, not great at quick peeling due to skills coming out slow as well as the weakness versus range classes. As an artillerist you'll counter classes like gun lancers, paladins, strikers, war dancers, scrappers, while struggling against classes like sorceress, deadeye, gunslinger, soul fist, shadow hunter, and bard. Rounding out the hunter classes, gunslinger is a range damage carry that is also, but not as much as a hybrid like deadeye. Unlike deadeye, gunslingers will be running 250 specialty along with 750 swiftness, which will increase her damage with her rifle and shotgun. We don't run domination here due to the fact that almost all of the combat combo damage you'll deal is in the form of paralysis. Gunslingers, unlike Deadeyes, don't have any airborne skills in their handgun kit. Gunslinger pros include solid ranged map control, movement, both level 1 and level 2 super armors, along with high damage. The cons to this class is that they don't have any airborne skills on their pistols, and they do need to get melee range to deal maximum damage. As a gunslinger, you can expect to counter classes like Sorceress, Sharpshooter, Gunlancer, Blade, Soulfish, Deadeye, Artillerist, while being countered by War Dancer, Striker, Scrapper, Shadow Hunter. The ideal comp for a Gunslinger would consist of one melee plus a Paladin. Strikers are classified as initiators and harassers in the arena. You'll spec 750 into swiftness with a split of 100 specialty and 150 domination. The 100 points into specialty here allows you to build meter faster, allowing you to have more uptime on your tiger dash identity skill. The pros to striker include superior movement, initiating ability, and solid 1vx potential. 1vx potential as in being able to maneuver around multiple people, not so much getting damage out. Cons to Striker include a lack of super armor and essentially no burst damage outside of its awakening, making this not a damage carry class. Strikers will excel against Shadow Hunters, Gunslingers, Deadeyes, Scrappers, while struggling against Gunlancers, Blades, Artillerists. Ideal comps for Striker include one support and one damage carry. War dancers, much like strikers, are initiators but specialize at frontline bruising. Stat wise, you'll be going the standard 750 swiftness along with 250 domination. Pros to War Dancer include its ability to initiate creating attack opportunities for its team, solid overall damage, as well as providing team buffs in the form of speed and damage reduction. War Dancers come equipped with two damage reduction skills, one being from Combustion, which also gives an aura that ticks for damage for anyone that's next to the War Dancer. This aura can explode and deal big damage and knocks up all targets around her. Despite being a fighter class, War Dancer is one of the few classes that can bring a lot of value to her team just by soaking hits. The major con to War Dancer is its lack of super armor. It has none. Counters to War Dancer include Shadow Hunter, Scrapper, Paladin, while Artillerist, Blade, Gunslinger are classes that counter her. War Dancers are pretty flexible when it comes to comps. Really anything can work well outside of a 3 melee comp. Paladin alongside a ranged class with War Dancer would definitely be the way to go if you were really cherry picking. Soul Fist Roll is classified as a damage carry class with solid off support ability in the form of damage reduction and peels. Soul Fist would be running 750 swiftness with 2 250 specialty. Outside of damage, specialty here brings a lot of value decreasing the downtime of your hype stance. Pros to Soul Fist include high DPS, damage reduction, peeling ability, and movement, while weaknesses include being essentially worthless during your hype recovery stage while not being the best at harassing targets. Counters include Artillerist and Paladin, while Gunslinger, Deadeye, Shadowhunter, Sork, and Scrapper will be the counter to you as a Soul Fist. The ideal comp for Soul Fist would include a melee alongside Pally or Soul Fist as the support 
with two melee. Scrappers are melee initiating damage dealers that perform very well on the outside or back line when singling out opponents. 750 swiftness with 250 specialty is the priority here as the specialty will increase damage on the harder hitting green skills while also aiding with your meter generation. Scrappers excel at movement along with short cooldowns with overall good DPS, however the issues lie with the long animations making them easily interruptible. Scrappers are the counter to Soul Fist, Bard, Shadowhunter, Deadeye, Gunslinger, while being countered by Striker, Wardancer, Blade, Artillerist, Gunlancer in 3s. In a perfect world, the ideal comp for Scrapper would be a ranged class with Pally or double melee Bard setup. Deathblade is a melee damage carry class with very high burst and combo potential. As a Blade, you'll be running 750 Swiftness with either 250 Domination for the higher combo damage output or 250 specialty to generate your identity faster having more uptime on your surge skill. Outside of the high burst damage, other pros include speed buffs for team, access to a lot of airborne CCs, solid movement with access to the most amount of super armors for a melee damage carry. Cons to blade include longer cooldowns on some key damage skills while remaining in check by range classes when maelstrom buff is not up. Blades are known to be a melee counter matching up very well against classes like striker, war dancer, scrap or Berserker while being countered by Deadeye, Gunslinger, Sharpshooter, Shadowhunter. Ideal comps for Deathblade would be either a Pally with a range class or Bard with another melee. Shadowhunters are established as a ranged damage carry class that becomes a melee damage carry class during her transformation stage via identity. Currently, Shadowhunters are considered to be very strong in the high-level competitive PvP scene in Korea. Shadowhunters will be going 750 Swiftness with either 250 crit or 100 specialty with 150 crit. Top Korean players favor the crit over domination for her due to the fact that a lot, but certainly not all, of the damage dished out will not benefit from domination due to the fact that there are a lot of paralysis-based combos. Sure, there are absolutely instances of catching someone with a push or a hard CC, but those instances are not always guaranteed as there will also be plenty of instances of comboing someone from a paralysis state. Pros to Shadowhunter include very good movement, ranged peeling, harassing capability, ranged map control, and can just overall solo very well. Cons, there's only really one main one and that's the lack of super armor which they have none. Shadowhunters counter quite a few classes including Sork, Gunslinger, Deadeye, Blade, Gunslinger, Sharpshooter, Soulfist, and Artillerist while being countered by Striker, Wardancer, Scrapper. The ideal comps for our final class include one melee plus pally or a double range Gunlancer comp.